Ma ragazzi è venuto giù il ponte, non ci credo Numero unica emergenza eh, Buongiorno, è appena crollato il ponte su, dell'autostrada sul Polcevera eh, Ma come è crollato? È crollato, è crollato Metà del ponte è crollato sulla strada di sopra Il ponte dell'autostrada ponte dell'autostrada sul Polcevera Ho sentito il rumore sordo E ho visto la strada che, che andava giù e io andavo giù con, con lei mi sento miracolato sì, perché e sembrava di stare in un film stiamo cercando di tirare fuori un attimo le persone ci cadiamo giù abbiamo delle persone sepolte When, on the 14th of August 2018, a 210 meter section of the Morandi Bridge collapsed, Genoa was put in need by one of the saddest tragedies ever occurred to this ancient and glorious city. Since 1963, the bridge was not only part of the modern landscape and architectural representation of the city, but due to its location, it was one of the major links from Italy to France. After this tragic event, the city of Genoa, supported by the Italian government, decided to give a boost in accelerating the procedures of demolition of the bridge. Fagioli was called together with other expert operators for the removal of Morandi Bridge sections, including experts in structural and architectural design and companies specialized in environment reclamation. Fagioli used tower lift and strain jacking system Crawler cranes used either for the lifting and lowering of material and as a support for fagioli equipment, SPNTs to mobilize the sections at ground level. Fagioli started the operation of the removal of the burger beam number 8, comprised between V-shaped piles number 7 and number 8, weighing about 916 tons, with a length of about 36 meters and 18 meters wide. Fagioli used four by 600 ton capacity strain jacks, two strain jacks on the western side bridge pylon and two on the eastern side, to lower the central bridge section. The jacks used for the lowering operation were positioned on two cantilever beams, provided with additional four strain jacks, 180 ton capacity each, with the task of balance the whole structure. Two counterbalancing support beams were transversely positioned underneath the western and eastern bridge pylons in order to anchor all the lifting lowering structure to the west-east bridge sections. Two support beams were positioned underneath the burger beam section. On the eastern bridge pylon another structure was positioned at the top end of the bridge with two additional strain jacks with counterweights with the task of providing a counterbalancing action during the lowering. Following the same procedure, position of the counterweights and strain jacks, removal of DEX constraints such as fixed and mobile joints, lifting action of the beam by a few centimeters, cutting operation with diamond wires, beam number seven, 850 ton, beam number six, and beam number five, each weighing 916 ton, were lowered by strain jacking system in two months. By the end of March, deck beam number four was lowered and touched the ground. In the meantime, on March the 18th, five cranes arrived in Genoa to be used for the dismantling operations of the western piles. Two main cranes have a capacity of 600 ton each. V-shaped pile number 5 was the first pile to be demolished on the west side of the bridge. The operation started with the removal of the lateral parts, the sidewalks. The deck was sectioned in three parts in the longitudinal direction. The first section, weighing 300 ton, was lowered on the 16th of April, the second on the 19th of April and the third on the 26th of April by crawler cranes with a rotation action. After the free portion of the deck beam, the pillars were also sectioned to two-thirds of their height by oblique cuts and sections taken away by Fagioli SPNTs. In the same way, the pile number 4, end of May, pile number 7, first half of June, pile number 6, first week of July, pile number 3, end of July, and pile number 8, early days of August, were dismantled and sections taken away by the SPNTs. 
Beam number 11, weighing 750 ton, was cut and lowered with jacks by the end of May. If blasting with explosives was initially foreseen for the pile number 8, it was decided to disassemble just like the other piles. Being 4 meters longer than all the others, it required some additional cuts. Unlike the other piles, the legs of pile number 8 were cut with diamond wire and loaded and lowered with fagioli corolli cranes. Pile number 2, the last one left, was demolished at the same time as the pile 8. The demolition of the bridge ended on the 12th of August 2019, whilst Fagioli's scope of work ended on the 31st of July. Demolition works on complex structures require relevant planning effort, as in many cases we need to operate on civil structures conceived and built many years ago, with different regulations compared to nowadays requirements. This is the case of the Morandi Bridge, one of the highest expressions of the Italian engineering capacity in the field of pre-stressed concrete structures back in the 60s. The partial collapse of the structure determined a situation of anomalous static balance and potentially risky condition in the remaining structure. Consequently, the procedures adopted for the dismantling of the bridge involved the detailed preparatory phases of securing and functional testing of the remaining structures in order to ensure that the operations would take place in condition of maximum safety and stability. The viaduct was divided into distinct sections with different structural peculiarities. To the west side, the viaduct consisted of a series of eight piles with inclined V-shaped columns embedded at the base, with an average length of 36 meters and a height of 45 meters. To the east side, there were only two large cable-stayed piles with cantilever spans, a total length of about 180 meters and total height of 90 meters. Fagioli proceeded with repeated load tests carried out by detecting the deformation of the structure. In order to identify the conditions of post-incidental stress and the residual resistant capacity, the entire work was modeled on the finished elements and calculated in all its temporal phases, from construction to collapse up to the representation of all the intermediate steps of the planned dismantling operations. The rheological effects, deformation and flow within a material, of post-compression were assessed with laser scanners. Steps were taken to restore the balance of the surviving structures, which resulted to have high asymmetrical loads due to the lack of the collapsed structural elements. This is the case of pile 8, which due to the loss of the burger beam on the eastern side was in a strong and balanced condition. The rebalancing operation was performed by applying external forces at the support of the collapsed pad of an amount equal to the weight of the latter. The external vertical load, equal to about 300 tons, was applied by means of two cable recovery jacks, positioned onto the cantilever beam of the pile, contrasted at the base by a counterweight of adequate mass. The piles were previously reinforced in order to guarantee more safety. Once the safety and functional tests were completed, the real demolition phases began. To the west side, the eight piles and the related burger beams were dismantled in pieces. For the dismantling of the burger beams supported by the V-shaped fire piles, a metal structure work system was designed, resting onto the piles. The lifting system, positioned at the end of the cantilever bridge section, raised it gradually in order to allow the cutting of the support onto which it was placed and lowering it to the ground. The positioning of strain jacks opposite to the lifting one guaranteed stability. The support system of Fagioli cantilever beam system was designed to distribute the load onto the pile in an isostatic and uniform manner, able to perfectly transfer the 250 ton load of each of the two strain jacks onto the three beams of the pile. The load transferred to each concrete structure was applied by support, that is by contact from below, and not by traction. This kind of methodology required to do some holes executing with core drilling machines and avoiding plastering elements of carpentry onto the reinforced concrete. This action increased safety on site. This activity was carried out by making longitudinal cuts in the concrete structure, about 36 meters long with thickness up to 3 meters, 
using Tyrolite diamond wire, specifically designed for reinforced concrete processing. The whole concrete structure was divided into three large blocks with the weights suitable for lifting by means of two Fajoli Demag CC 2800 crawler cranes in SSL configuration with 78 meter boom, super lift 300 ton at 13 meter. Due to the shape of the pile before it was cut, it was necessary to support it with the cranes, which maintained for the entire duration of the cut a weight close to the 100% of its weight. For what concerned the two piles on the eastern side that survived the collapse of the third, they were much higher and more complex to be handled compared to the piles on the western side, as they were cable stayed with large cantilever beams. Three pairs of fragile lifting towers were erected, two for pile 10 and one for pile 11, each 50 meter high, positioned on specifically cast concrete foundations. Lifting towers had the function of temporarily supporting three cantilever beams of the piles from below in the event of structural collapse of the stays. The support beams also applied a vertical load upwards of about 600 ton to ensure a rebalancing of the loads. The leftist lifting towers and beams were therefore designed for two load combinations. The first called service, with loads imposed by the hydraulic system on the concrete structure equal to 600 tons per pair of towers, and the second called extra heavy, with loads imposed on the hydraulic system from the concrete structure equal to 2,400 tons per tower pair. In order to increase precision and constantly monitor the load transmitted to the reinforced concrete structure, a reading system with load cell was also adopted, with an accuracy of 0.5% with readings 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The system was mounted at the base of each jack. The securing operation allowed the removal of the Burger Beam 11. Some fascinating uh, pictures, uh, uh, an incredible uh, accomplishment there. As I say, we are delighted to have with us uh, Andrea Gazzola, who's a business development manager at Fagioli. I think you're uh, live with us in Gorgonzola, uh, of all places of the cheese fame. Uh, exactly, have... Alex. <laughs> Here <laughs> I am. Buon formaggio. Uh, let's, uh, I have quite a few questions for you. What was the most uh, satisfying part of the uh, project? 
Well, I think one of the most satisfying was you know, linking the, the demolition phase uh, of the of the project to the reconstruction phase of the project, which actually uh, came together and kind of overlap one with the other. And you know, seeing the, the the bridge that connected the two parts of the, the city uh, going going back into its its place. And this is one of the most interesting parts of the project, definitely. Now, obviously, uh, says somebody, there was a high amount of uh, national and international media interest in the project uh, itself. Did this cause any additional work or time pressure or just even pressure on you, the, the, the intense international uh, interest? Oh, definitely pressure. I don't want to say work. We had actually people dedicated to, to the media and uh, communication on a day-by-day -day basis. Uh, uh, we had uh, 24 hours of cameras uh, uh, on the project, uh, uh, running day and night uh, on multiple points, just looking at the bridge and, and activities going on. So that actually obviously gives a little bit of pressure into the operations. You can't miss anything. You can't do any mistake because everybody's watching you. And we are on the news every day. So it's it definitely gives a lot of pressure, but we're kind of used to working under pressure. So that's <laughs> that helps. <laughs> Uh, somebody says an amazing engineering and deconstruction uh, project. Congratulations. Uh, but wants to know what was the overall cost for the demolition? A lot. <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, I can't disclose that, but it's, uh, it was a, you know, very challenging and, and also it implied a lot of uh, uh, side works uh, and uh, um, in connection to the underground uh, protections uh, that were in very congested and urbanized area. So we had gas under, underground. We had a lot of uh, things that impacted the, the demolition phase. So uh, besides uh, that, we also had some asbestos issues uh, in terms of material with which the build, the, the construction of the build of the bridge was made. So you know, a lot of things impact on the cost, but uh, we stayed in budget, I can tell you that. Right? Congratulations. And a uh, final question. According to the status of, of different bridges uh, around Europe, just your estimation, how many have to be demolished in the next 10 years? <laughs> I have no idea, but I can guess a lot of them. <laughs> a lot of them definitely would need, at least in Italy, a lot of them need some you know, significantly uh, uh, refit. Uh, I don't know exactly how many bridges will have to be demolished, but uh, there are some of them in Italy for sure. And, uh, and there's gonna be a lot of work in the next future for everybody. Yep. Just one final question from me in one sentence, what did you learn from this experience? Uh, we learned a lot, we learned a lot. Um, uh, I wanna say that the, the, the best thing that we learned is, uh, is uh, you know, how to work together with the partners that work with Fajoli on the project uh, under a lot of pressure with very short, uh, uh, time available and uh, uh, way to work together and cooperation by the parties was very, very good. And I found this uh, a very positive experience and, and, and also you know, learning experience in terms of uh, project execution. Okay, well, grazie a lei, Fagioli, Andrea Gazzola.